Welcome back. Let's move forward into the administration setup phase of uh, setting up a restoration in the CEREC 4.4 version software um, for implant restoration. All right, so moving forward, um, the first thing that we have to choose is, of course, the indication. Now, this is all assuming that we've already set up um, our patient. <clears throat> As you know from using the CEREC before, hopefully, you can add a case or you can add a new patient. I like to just add a case. Um, that way you don't have too many patients. So search for the patient's name, pull up that patient. Obviously, this is a typo don't. Um, we're gonna select abutment. So you've got single tooth, you've got multiple teeth, bridge, of course, then you've got the abutment choice. So first step, of course, is selecting the abutment. The indication is the abutment. Now, I almost always set it up as this multi-layer abutment. Um, Usually this is what I select when I'm setting up an implant restoration. Now, the nice thing about it is, when I get to the end of the design process, I can opt to either turn it into a screw retained crown, meaning leave it before the split, and we'll get to that in just a minute, um, and kind of like we talked about in the previous video, um, or you can go ahead and split it. So, um, I usually, like I said, set it up as a multi-layer um, so that going forward, it allows me to get to the very end and then make that choice at the end rather than having to go back and do a couple of other steps. So make sure when you're setting it up that you make this determination beforehand. I usually set up every case as a multi-layer as indicated here. Um, and then I have the option of leaving it as a screw retained and not splitting it out. Okay, so the next choice that we need to make um, after we've selected the design uh, mode, which I've selected biogeneric individual. Now, if you happen to have um, a biocopy scan of that tooth before it came out or of a wax up, you can certainly change this to biogeneric copy. But this is just assuming everybody's on biogeneric individual. So we're going to select the framework. Now, remember, we selected multi layer abutment. So there's multi and there's layer. There's two layers. So the framework is the first selection. And so that, that's our abutment, right? That's the abutment. The framework is the abutment. So, <clears throat> for the multi-layer, I'm going to select Emacs. Now, if you use Zirconia, you can certainly use Zirconia. If you're going to use Vita Enamic, you can use Vita Enamic. Just select the appropriate material for your framework. So you can see here we've selected Emacs. Um, and then the next step is to select, select our veneering structure. Again, this is assuming we're doing a multi-layer abutment. So we're going to select our veneering structure, which is the crown that will be bonded on the top. Um, of the multi-layer crown, uh, multi-layer restoration rather. So this doesn't matter, you can select whatever you want to select, it just depends on your personal preference and the, the indication for that individual patient. But once we've got the framework material selected, which in my case is always Emacs, I don't have a zirconia set up in my office yet, um, it's always Emacs for me, and I haven't used Vita and I haven't used any of the Telio, Telio temporary crowns, um, so I almost always, always, I always set it up as Emacs. Um, but the veneering structure is really up to you. You can make an Emacs abutment, and then you can make a Vita crown, or you can make an Empress crown, or you can make an Empress multi-crown, or you can make a Vita enamic crown. Um, this is entirely up to you what your preference is. All right, so again, for the veneering structure, we're gonna go through and select the materials. I'm obviously selecting Emacs. Um, and then the next step we have is, are we gonna do a tie base or a scan post? Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the difference, kind of like we talked about in one of the previous lectures, um, usually the scan post is a much simpler scan um, because it's taller. It's easier to orient the scan body on the scan post. It's just a lot more, a lot easier to see um, than the tie, tie base in some situations. So if you have access to a scan post, go for it. Um, but please remember that just like the tie base, the scan post is platform specific. So these scan posts are unique to the individual implant platform, um, be it Nobel Active, conical connection, internal conical connection, regular platform, or narrow platform. You need different scan posts. It's not just the implant itself, it's the platform. So I'm gonna select tie base here, um, and then we're gonna select the manufacturer. Serona, I haven't ever used any of the cam logs. I've only used the Seronas. Um, then we need to select the implant brand. Like I said, these are specific to the brand and the platform. And you can see NBA is Nobel Active. NBA is Nobel Active. There's two of them down here. Um, the 5.0 is the regular. The 4.5 is the narrow. So you need to make sure that you're aware of 
what platform you need. And if there's any question on this, you can refer back to that previous page in one of the previous lectures where we discussed which one is which. And you can also ask, always ask. Please ask your, your implant rep, your Serone rep, your Seric rep, um, someone who's in a support situation if you don't know what you need. Um, you're better off having what you need or having more than what you need than getting to a situation and having a patient sitting in the chair and having the wrong part after you've led up to this, oh, I can do this in one appointment, we can get this done, and then not having what you need. So always ask, make sure that you're prepared for what you need, okay? So um, in, in reference to using a scan post or a tie base, make sure that you select whether you're using a tie base or a scan post. The previous version of the software would default to the scan post. Um, and then, for instance, if you didn't select scan post and used a tie base, you would end up with a restoration that was obviously way too tall, and I did this more than once. So the idea is that scan post is much taller than the tie base. So you put a scan body on the top of it, and for the scan post, this is the scan post and this is the tie base, um, where you're scanning, you're scanning this surface, right? The computer will read that and, and make the crown taller because it's compensating for the height of the scan post relative to the occlusal plane, right? Anyway, so that being said, if you put in a tie base and you have the computer selected at scan post, this is what you get. <laughs> and that doesn't work. We know this, right? That's not going to work. You'd have a whole heck of a lot of time, a heck of a fun time doing occlusal adjustment to get that to work. So make sure that you select what you use. Select scan post, use a scan post. Select tie base, use a tie base. Um, you can go back if you realize that you've selected a tie base and you have a scan post or vice versa, um, but you'll have to re-image um, because you cannot switch between the two without re-imaging. All right, so be cautious on that, on that step. All right, and of course, last, we wanna select the tooth that we're using. For our intents and purposes today, we're doing tooth number 19. So let's just review what we have over here. We've got a multi-layer biogeneric individual. We're using a tie base. Um, this is the Nobel Active 5.0. That's a regular platform. The veneering structure, I'm sorry, this, the framework structure is Emacs, and so is the veneering structure. Um, and then there's the milling unit. Now remember, these do not have to be the same. You can make the abutment out of Emacs and make the crown out of Empress or Vita or Lava Ultimate if, well, you can't use Lava Ultimate, um, or Cirrus Smart or anything like that. Um, it's entirely up to you what you want to use. Um, for our intents and purposes today, I've chosen them both the same. This is usually what I do here. All right, moving on. Acquisition. Okay, let's talk first about accurate tie base and scan body placement. This is really, really critical. So this is a video, of course, of a patient. Um, he's had the implant placed for some time. He's had a healing abutment on there, a fairly wide body, regular platform, Nobel active, internal conical connection, um, healing abutment. And you can see the tissue here looks pretty good. The contour is really nice. Um, it's a little erythematous, it's a little bit darker red than we would like. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is put the tie base on now. You notice that's a tie base. That is not a scan body, that is a tie base. Um, be very cautious, internally that implant has a hex. And so the tie base that I'm putting on there has to be oriented correctly. It must lock in in the right orientation, uh, otherwise um, you'll have uh, a poor fit. So once we get the tie base in place, and I would suggest also putting the scan body on because it's not, no extra work necessarily, um, put the scan body on the tie base, then get a, get a bite wing x-ray. Make sure those pieces are mated correctly. So will there be doctors there? No, so here comes the yours. scan body. This is a white one like we talked about before. The white um, generally is used for the blue cam. However, the Omnicam reads it just fine. So what I'm looking for there is where is that internal index, the notch and the groove? Where are those? I'm trying to line that up appropriately to make sure they slide together. You can see there I've found it and they slid right in. I'm just double checking it seated all the way. Usually there's a little bit of force that's necessary. Um, it should not be painful for the patient. 
but you're going to have to put some force to get it to slide down. So this is an illustration of the internal notch. You can see that groove and then the notch right there. Those two should mate together perfectly. See how it slides together? <coughs> they should mate into, into one another perfectly. And then you have a flush mounting there, so to speak. Um, but those pieces should go together without um, impinging, without the notch impinging on the groove. Now notice that I can put that on I can cross thread it, so to speak. I can force it in a way that will not be correct. Um, the problem with that is it's plastic. And if it's not lined up correctly and I push too hard, then it's, it's gonna force through the plastic. The plastic will bend and it'll slide down. So I would suggest when you first start doing this, make sure that you try it a couple of times outside the patient's mouth so that you feel, you can feel what that insertion feels like where that groove and the notch come together. All right, well, this is really critical. This right here, putting that scan body on the tie base or the scan post is the most error prone area in implant restoration, in my opinion, using the CEREC and the tie base because people will get these off alignment and force it to place. Um, so like I said before, do this a couple of times outside the mouth, make sure it slides together and you're comfortable with how it comes together. All right, but it has to be perfect. If you if you bend this tie base or the scan body rather, throw it away, get another one. And they come in little boxes. Again, this is a, this is a gray one now. You can see the gray versus the white one in the previous video. All right. So, like we mentioned before, scan body placement, the tie base works, but it's difficult to visualize perfect placement. <clears throat> the scan post is easier to confirm an accurate placement. Um, both will allow inaccurate placement, like I said, so you can force it to place there. Um, and if you do, you'll see a white show through on the gray where the plastic is deforming. So it's easier, and I'd recommend that you start with the scan post um, if you haven't used any. Now the scan post is reusable. You don't want to throw that away. You will still need a tie base for every single implant you're going to restore. Um, so you'll have to get a scan post and a tie base if you're using both. If you're using the scan post, you'll need both. Whereas with a tie base, you just need one. You don't have to carry an extra supply of scan posts. Okay. Here's a scan post. And I'm going to demonstrate how to cross thread this, I believe. So as you can see, we got a notch and a groove. They're going to slide together. That was not too difficult. You can see how much taller that scan post is. Now watch. Now I'm going to force this in the wrong orientation. You can see the little white area right here, but I could get that all the way down. And that's obviously not oriented correctly. So with a little bit of force, you can cross thread that scan body onto the scan post or the tie base. So please ensure when you're doing this step that you've practiced it outside the mouth and that the notch and the groove are correctly aligned. Otherwise your restoration will be angled. Uh, it'll be rotated such that it won't, it won't work. It won't work and you'll have to go back to, to step one, go all the way back to the design phase, re-imaging after you've spent all that time going through des the design process and the imaging. Got it? This is crucial that we get everything lined up correctly.